The votes are in. The people have spoken. We are going to upgrade this MacBook. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And a couple days ago I put out a video where I showed this computer here, this 2010 MacBook Pro 15 inch and I explained everything about it and posed the question to you guys if we should upgrade this or not. And we went through four steps. If you remember those four steps, step one was finding out what we were starting with, what the specs are, what's inside. It's a 2010 MacBook Pro 15 inch. It's got an i5 processor. I think it's got four gigs of RAM, an old crappy ass uh, hard drive. And that's what we're starting with. But overall, physical condition's not too bad. Step two was figuring out what it could be upgraded to. So we figured out it can be upgraded to 8 gigs of RAM and obviously a brand new SSD. The uh, battery was still pretty good on it, so I'm not worried about that. Step three was figuring out what that was going to cost. And all in all, it was I approximated about $150 to upgrade this up to about the best potential that it could be. And then step four was figuring out if that $150 was better spent upgrading this MacBook Pro or going out and finding something, you know, brand new. And the only thing that we really found in that price range was either a entry-level Chromebook or a very underpowered Windows laptop. So I posed those questions out to the audience. I got a lot of feedback saying, hey, go ahead and do it. And, uh, you know, some people said they've, they've done it before and they've been happy with it. I've obviously done several of these on my, on my channel. Not a 2010, but several other MacBooks. And that's where we're at, and that's what we're going to do. But before we get started with that, I can't stand looking at this dirt anymore. So we are going to give it a quick little clean. And nothing fancy, we're just going to use some good old alcohol and some toilet paper. I know you can use a microfiber cloth or anything like that, but for, for all intents and purposes, this is going to get the job done. So let's go ahead and clean this thing up so I don't have to keep on looking at those stains. Alright, it took a little bit of elbow grease, but overall it looks a lot better. Still a couple little marks here and there, but it looks a lot prettier than it was before. At least I can tolerate looking at it. So now let's look at the parts that I got to go along with it. So starting off with the RAM, I ordered this RAM, which is two 4 gig sticks of PC3-8300, which is what this laptop needs. It's a 1.5 volts instead of the lower voltage memory of the newer laptops. And this is the first time I bought this particular brand. But it was a good deal. It only cost me $21 right on Amazon. And it came packaged just like this. Usually you find a kit that's like two, two four gig things in one package. But this is how it was. So that's going to be our RAM. And then I got an Inland Professional 256 gig uh, SSD. 2.5 inch SATA SSD. And I've used a lot of these and a lot of computers. I've never had any problem with them. And this was only $21. So all in, we're right at about $142, considering I said I had about $100 invested in this. Really only about $80 invested in it, but let's just keep it round numbers. So around $140 total is what my total investment is in this whole project. So let's go ahead and get started taking this thing apart and putting the new parts in it. And before that, while I'm thinking about it, let's talk about the hard drive itself. Um, you can obviously go 128 gigabytes or 120 gigabytes, uh, 250, 500, 1 terabyte, 2 terabytes. You can go anywhere in there. I picked this particular one, one because the price is pretty good. I know you can get a 500 for not much more than that, but really what I was looking to do is replace the existing drive and get this computer into the state that it can do stuff like everyday stuff, including like some web 
you know, type applications. Now this obviously isn't going to be a powerhouse. You're not going to be video editing or, or photo editing, you know, big files on it. So I just wanted to kind of keep it in that same realm of like what we were comparing it with. We were comparing it with a Chromebook or a cheap Windows laptop. So if a Chromebook has a tiny little hard drive on it because everything's going to be done in the cloud, then that's why I went ahead and went with a 256. Obviously, if this project goes well, then we can clone this onto a bigger drive pretty easily. But I just wanted to get this in here, get it all up and running, and then kind of live with it for about a week, do some real work on it, and see how it works. So now that I've addressed the, uh, the tiny hard drive, let's go ahead and get started taking this thing apart. All right, so after flipping it over, I did find some more dirt marks on the bottom there, so I go ahead and went ahead and cleaned that up also. And now I'm ready for my tools. So I got my trusty Cervetto tool kit. You can get this on Amazon. I know I plug it a lot, but really it's the, the cheapest, best screwdriver kit that I've ever used, especially for working on these MacBooks. So out of that kit, I can obviously grab the driver. I got a double zero Phillips to take the screws off the outside. And I've got a T6 Torx bit also for working with the, uh, the hard drive mount. So let's go ahead and get these screws off and I'll be right back. All right, so I've taken the 10 screws out of here and put them on my handy dandy magnetic holder that also comes with that Strabido kit. And if you remember on these uh, unibody MacBooks, if you got the hinge away from you, the three longest screws go in these three back right holes there. So this keeps them all in place, helps me not to lose them because I've, lose, I've lost plenty of screws before. So I'm going to set this aside, keep it nice and safe, and let's pop this thing open and see what it looks like. So we're going to grab right by the hinge, lift up a little bit, and lift it up away. And lo and behold, there she is. A little dusty, but I've seen a lot worse before. So now she's all open. Let's start identifying some of the parts that we're going to be replacing. All right, so I wanted to get a little close up here of the battery on this 2010 model and this battery is a little bit different than if you've watched the 2011 or 2012 videos that I've done. Uh, a little bit more complicated in taking apart. So in this particular video I'm not going to re remove the battery. Um, I know that it's not 100% safe if you don't do it but I've done this several times and I feel pretty confident. If you do want to make the extra step of replace or re taking this battery out before you start doing anything else then here's what you need to do. You've got a Phillips screw right here, right next to, right to the right of where the RAM is. You've got a Phillips screw right here. Or actually, these are both tri-wing. So the tri-wing, you would need a tri-wing bit out of the, the kit, which is in that Cervetto kit. So this one, and then this one, and then there's a hidden one right here under this label. So you peel back the very end of this label that says, hey, dummy, don't take this battery out and there will be a, a hidden one under there. So you take those three tri-wings out, and then you're going to pull this back a little bit, and then you've got this connector right here, which once you pull it back, you don't want to pull it all the way out because it's still connected. So pull it up a little bit. You're going to take this cable out by pulling it towards the, uh, the front of the, the MacBook, and then you set that thing apart. For, for myself, I think that I am confident that I can do all the upgrades I need to without accidentally throwing any metal spare metal parts over here in some circuit that may be still energized by the battery. Um, so I would rather take the risk of doing these part replacements that way than uh, breaking one of these mounts because these are plastic mounts that will eventually break or breaking, heaven forbid, this uh, ribbon cable here. So that being said, Let's go ahead and get this memory taken out, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, so like I said, taking great care not to touch any of the, the metal parts, especially with anything conductive. We're going to take these little plastic ears here, and we're going to spread them apart. And we're going to watch that ram pop straight up. And we're just going to grab the ram and wiggle it straight out. So when it pops up, it's going to be at a slight angle and then you're just going to slide it right out of the slot and then to get the bottom one we're just going to spread these apart again 
and let that pop up. And then sometimes it gets caught and you just spread them apart again, let it pop all the way up and then grab your ram, wiggle it out. And there we go. There's our two, two giga, two gigabyte chips that I can throw into my bin of million <laughs> ram chips that I don't use anymore. And we're going to replace those with the brand new four gigabyte, like I said, PC3 8500. 1.5 volts So with this you're just going to do the same thing in reverse you want to line up the offset notch here In this case, it's on the right and you can see right here. And I'll point with my non-conductive pointer Right inside there is a little Spacer to stop you from plugging this thing in backwards. So we're going to put the bottom chip in first So a slight angle and I'm going to get this little hair out of the way first slight angle Bring it down into that bottom slot. You're going to kind of push it in to make sure that it is even flush. Push that way. And then we're going to push down on it past the little ears here that lock it in place. And then the second one, we're going to do the same thing. Make sure you got it lined up right. We're going to go into this top channel. Kind of wiggle it all the way in. And push it down. And lock it in. Now, if you want to make sure that you got it in right, of course, once you boot it up, you'll know for sure if you got it in right. But I always take a look right here, right along the card edge, and see if I can see an uneven amount of gold contacts in there. Like if I see the left side here, I can see all the gold contacts and none on the right side. Then I know that it's probably not seated properly in there. So pop it back up while it's still open and try that again. But I think we got it. We'll know for sure once we boot it up. So we're going to move on from there to the hard drive. All right, so here is our old hard drive, and it is the original Hitachi uh, hard drive. You can see the Apple logo on it, and you can see it was manufactured in 2009. So to take this guy out, we've got two Phillips head screws, one right here and one right here. And we're going to loosen those up, and this is actually like a little retaining bar that holds the drive down. So what I like to do is... Loosen them up, but don't take them all the way out. And just make sure you unscrew them until it's all the way up. And then now we can take the whole thing out. And the magnetic tip actually helps out with that. And now we've got both the screws still captive in there. I'm just going to take this and put it to the side. And now what we've got, we've got the drive here. It's still attached right here with the... SATA connector and it's got some mounting studs that mount it underneath here. No need to unscrew these. We're just going to lift this up a little bit and don't lift it too far away because you're not going to get very far away before you start ripping this thing out. And I'm just going to wiggle this connector out by removing the drive away from it. So keeping my hand still on this side, removing the drive away so that I don't put too much tension on this ribbon cable. We're just going to lay him back down in there. And here's our drive. Now once we take the drive out, it does have those four mounting studs. That's what the T6, the Torque 6 is for. So we're going to take these four mounting studs off of this drive and put them on the new drive. And if we want to, we can take off this little plastic pull thing and put that on the new one also. That's just to help you lift it up out of there. So I'm going to take these studs off, put them on the new one, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've taken those four studs off, put them on the new drive. And I even moved the little plastic tab over. And it's just got some sticky adhesive to it that it still will stick on the new drive. So to get this back in here, these two mounting studs here are going to sit inside here. So they need to go in at a slight angle, and then we can lay it down. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and attach our SATA ribbon cable. Again, keeping the drive nice and close so we don't stretch that out. So that's fully seated there. So this just sits right in here. And this drive here is obviously a lot skinnier than this drive. So it's just going to lay down and sit in its mount. It may, may seem a lot smaller than the other one. Maybe a little bit more space here. But once we get this 
uh, bracket on here it's going to be completely secure and it doesn't matter if it rattles around a little bit because it's SSD anyways no moving parts so here's our retaining bracket again those little orange almost looks like a guillotine little orange things just sit right on top of those studs that we just mounted in there and then we just screw that down back just swapped it out for the Phillips head screwdriver again and there she is nice and secure so with that the hardware is done so if you've watched this video before or videos like this before then you know I like to usually just take the cover and place it back on but not put the 10 screws back in it I'm gonna go ahead and get it all booted up and test to make sure that the new hardware that I just placed in there is all functioning correctly before I waste the time of putting all the screws in because I may have to take them all back out so I just like to take this kind of clamshell it with my fingers flip it over and now we're ready to test it out all right, with the hardware taken care of, now it's just a matter of getting a operating system on that brand new drive we just installed. So in preparation for that, make sure you've got on this 15 watt model, you want an 85 watt uh, power supply for it. The 60 watt will work if that's all you have, but I would just let it charge up all the way before you start doing anything because the 60 watt will keep it charged, but it won't charge it while you're doing stuff. Um, so I've got that 85 watt hooked up. I've got a ethernet cable hooked up to my internet you can do this these next step over Wi-Fi but this just saves me a step and plus I've got the cable so I'm gonna head and plug it in so let's talk about the operating system that we need to get into the hard drive a couple different ways of, of doing this now obviously on this video we are choosing to get a fresh version of Mac OS installed we're not saving any data from that old drive um, I didn't back anything up there was nothing on there that I needed if this was your computer and you were upgrading, then yes, you will want to save that data off somehow. Several different ways of doing that. Um, but for this video here, we're just installing fresh. So I've got a couple different methods of installing a fresh Mac operating system onto a brand new hard drive. I'll put links to two different videos that I've got. One using the uh, recovery Wi-Fi method and one using a USB thumb drive. So down in the description below, there will be links to both of those videos. For this video, I am going to boot it up and get it into that recovery screen just to make sure that I can see that everything is working properly and that the new drive is installed correctly. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to power it up by hitting the power button and then immediately hit Option Command R and that's going to get us to the recovery screen that would install the latest version of macOS that is compatible with this particular uh, computer. So a couple different keyboard commands that you can use, but for this one, I'm going to use option command R. So let's go ahead and hit that power button, get the fingers ready. And we're just going to hold those down until it boots up. We just heard the chime and now I can let go. So now we can see the little spinning globe there that said that the internet uh, recovery method is starting. And I'm going to go ahead and let this go all the way through. It's going to download some stuff to the drive and it's going to get us to the recovery mode and I'll be back when that's all set up. All right, so I killed the lights a little bit to cut down the glare. I've got here the, uh, the Mac OS utilities. Once it boots all the way up into that recovery mode, this is what we're going to find. And we're going to check just a couple of things here. Remember, if you want to do a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get Mac OS onto that new hard drive, then check those links below. But first thing I'm going to do, we, we know that by it booting up and getting this far, we know that the RAM isn't completely botched up. So some part of the RAM is working. If we want to see how much of the RAM is working, we can go up into Utilities and open up Terminal. And there's a command you can type in, syscontrol, S-Y-S-C-T-L, space, H-W dot memsize, M-E-M-S-I-Z-E. And that right there, if you go ahead and you take this number 
and you divide it by a billion, you know, put your little imaginary commas in there, you'll see that I end up with an 8 here. So that's showing the 8 gigs of RAM. So I'm pretty confident that all 8 gigs of RAM is showing up. So we can go ahead and exit out of terminal by clicking on terminal and quit. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into disk utility and just make sure that we can see that new drive that we put in. So you're going to see that this right here is the um, basically all the restore uh, partitions that they installed with the uh, with the internet to get us up to this point. And here is this SATA SSD media. So this is the drive that we're looking at and we can click on show all devices and we can see that it hasn't been partitioned yet, hasn't been formatted yet, but it does have a capacity of 256 gigabytes. So it's ready to go. So I'm going to partition this up. I'm going to format it and we're going to install the latest Mac OS and then I'll be back once all that's done. All right, here we go. Mac OS High Sierra is all installed. And I'll be honest with you, once it got it all installed and it steps you through the step-by-step -step of setting up your account name and choosing your keyboard and all that stuff that you go through to set up Mac OS for the first time, that was all very smooth, like click, 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 not a lot of churning or anything. So I'm actually pretty impressed with this old 2010, almost 13-year-old uh, computer using this new hardware. So let's go ahead and make sure that everything installed in correctly as I expected it did. So here it is, Mac OS High Sierra. This is that 15 inch mid 2010, 2.4 gigahertz Intel i5. This is only a dual core i5, but I think for most general applications, it's only using two cores anyways. Eight gigs of RAM, so that showed up just fine. And we can double check that here. It shows both the four gig sticks. And then here's our new 256 gigabyte SSD drive. So everything worked perfectly. And at this point, this is as far as Apple would want you to go with this particular computer. Now, obviously, they'd rather you go right to the store and buy a new one. But this is a 13-year-old MacBook Pro uh, running probably the best hardware other than upgrading the, the size of the hard drive, as we talked about before. But running the best... Um, it can for this particular model. Now, I know they made faster ones. They made i7 versions of the same one. Those would be a little bit quicker than these, but for all intents and purposes, this is our $140 computer that we, we just put together. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with it, but the next step obviously is, is the ticking time bomb of High Sierra. So obviously the, the apps that we install and the browsers we install they're all going to be dependent on updating as far as they can based on the level of the operating system. And this may be our bottleneck going down the road. So our next step for the next video, as we're getting close to the end of this video, our next video will be using the Open Core Legacy Patcher to install a newer version of macOS than what Apple really intends or allows you to do directly from them. So as far as Apple is concerned, this High Sierra is the highest version of macOS that they will support. But using the awesome program of, Mac, of the OpenCore Legacy Patcher, it allows us to target a new type or a newer type of macOS. Now this particular model here, this 2010 model, according to them, they support all the way up to Monterey, macOS Monterey. And as of the time of this recording, they are working on the patches required to get it all the way up to Ventura. So we're gonna be targeting uh, Monterey in the next video. So stay tuned for the next video coming up soon where we are going to take this particular 13 year old laptop and bring it up into the modern age of software. So that is gonna wrap it up for this video. Like I said, stay tuned for that next video where we're gonna take this laptop up to the next level software wise and uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you don't wanna miss that. If you got anything out of this video, if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you upgrade your MacBook, then go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Give me a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, then like I said, subscribe to the channel. We're always doing upgrades on MacBooks. 
and other kind of helpful tips for uh, anybody in this hobby. Also, go ahead and check out the Family Geekery podcast. We record new episodes every Tuesday, and we cover all kinds of geeky topics. So if you're into comics or video games or movies, TV shows, go ahead and check that out. Yeah, I hope you enjoy that also. So that's going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.